Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode here on I've Got 10 as we continue our podcast series with the Dental Consultant Connection. And I am so excited and actually very honored this morning to have Diane Watterson with us. We're going to talk hygiene today. I know the last couple of weeks we've had such great content whether it was a billing, we had David Harris come on, talk about embezzlement. We've had all kinds of different, you know, great topics, relevant specific topics, but I'm ready to talk some hygiene. And we have with us an amazing woman who has done so much in the world of hygiene. And we're going to talk a little assisted hygiene this morning. So Diane, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, John. It's my pleasure to join you today and to talk about something that I am very passionate about. In my clinical career, I did both solo and assisted hygiene, and I much preferred assisted hygiene. It's just a far more uh, pleasurable way to work, if you will, having that extra set of hands to help with many of the duties of a hygiene visit. Yeah, absolutely. So as many of you can imagine, the content that Diane could share could last for a long time. She does speaks all over, does does a lot of uh, courses and things like that. So on today's episode, uh, we're going to touch on high level three uh, main areas, just to kind of put a little you know teaser out there as far as assisted hygiene. And then, like we've been doing with DCC, uh, we're going to then go ahead and record an audio podcast, uh, which you'll be able to listen to, where we'll get into a little bit more about Diane's story, and then also get into a little bit more detail about assisted hygiene. Uh, the things that she helps uh, teams with and all of that. So, Diane, the floor is yours. Well, first of all, there are a lot of misconceptions out here today about what assisted hygiene actually is. And uh, I'd, I'd like to dispel a couple of those myths. First of all, it's not accelerated hygiene. I just really detest that term, but I hear a lot of people throw that term around. But in assisted hygiene, the hygienist is not supposed to be running around like his or her lab coat's on fire. That is not what assisted hygiene is. But then in the assisted model, what we do is we take some of the elements of the hygiene visit and we delegate those to a qualified assistant. Now, this is the same model that the dentist practice under. And uh, I've asked many dentists this question uh, how productive would you be if you had to do everything you do by yourself? And most dentists would agree with me that if they had to do everything they do by themselves, they could cut their productivity by about half. So uh, it's the same way in hygiene. We just shift some of the uh, duties to a qualified assistant. It's not assistants doing profies, it is not that. Uh, if it is properly scheduled, then the hygienist doing assisted hygiene will see a few more patients every day, but be less tired at the end of the day than in work in the solo model. Yeah, and when, you, when you, uh, you talk about that, because I'm, you know, I'm sure when, when you talk with hygienists and teams, uh, and I've seen it on both sides, right? It's it's. They, they understand the value of it, but wow, how, how do I implement that into practice? How do we add this extra layer of hygiene? And so, you know, I'm sure that there are a lot of misconceptions out there. How about just maybe going along the lines of obviously really basic, you know, assistant hygiene and talking a, a, about it for maybe those that are, are new to the concept or what would you share with them if someone was to come up to you at one of your, your uh, courses or lectures and say, you know, I wanna get started. What are some of the first couple things to think about? Well, there are some prerequisites to this model to make it successful. It, you can't just throw uh, 25 names on a, a schedule and, and pray you survive it. That is not assisted hygiene. And uh, there are some things that will sabotage the model. And what I try to do is I've helped many, many offices implement assisted hygiene, but to do it in a systematic way, so that there is a high level of success with it. There are some, uh, first of all, you have to have two dedicated operatories. You can't uh, be a dentist that says, oh, well, we've got this uh, extra operatory. We just use it for overflow. So we'll use that one for our assisted hygiene. And, uh, but I might need to put an emergency patient in there sometimes too, and that won't work. It just simply will not work. Uh, another thing you have to have 
is an assistant that is dedicated to hygiene department. Uh, you can't have somebody that's trying to run around and help 15 people in the office. You have to have somebody that's just going to help the hygienist. You also need to be on a 10 minute increment schedule. Now, some dentists today are still working on a 15 minute increment schedule. I think you have to be on a 10 minute increment to do this and to do it successfully. So uh, it's very easy to switch over from a 15 minute to a 10 minute increment schedule. It's just a few clicks of a mouse, really. That's another one. And then uh, I think your front desk people have to have a basic understanding about how to schedule assisted hygiene. It's not rocket science, but uh, I do think that there needs to be that understanding. So uh, you, you can over schedule a solo schedule, but you can definitely over schedule an assisted schedule. So there needs to be those uh, about four things in place before we can really get down to uh, the intricacies of the schedule. So Diane, when you talk to practices, uh, across the country, um, I, you know, I've seen in my time that when you have a strong hygiene department, it really drives everything else in the practice, right? When when both both yes. teams are working together, so much of the restorative work that needs to get done is, is driven by hygiene. Can you talk a little bit about, uh, over the years, a lot of the practices that you've worked with and, and really the difference when, when, when a practice commits to this, um, it becomes a part of what they do, what the positive uh, impact has been on the restorative part of helping these patients get that care done? Well, that's a great question because profitability is a big reason for moving to the assisted model. I mean, quite frankly, let's just be clear about this. Uh, dentists today need to work efficiently. And, um, you know, this old cliche about we need to work uh, smarter, not harder. Well, I don't like cliches, but it's true. And I think in the assisted model, the hygiene is working smarter, not harder. Uh, it, in most offices today, if the hygienist is seeing one patient per hour, that's a lot of offices still do that. Well, she's going to see seven or eight patients in a normal day if if everybody shows up. But in the assisted model, it's easy, easy. I mean, you don't break a sweat to move to 12 or 13 patients a day. Now, you can do the math easily if you just increase the number of patients you see uh, in hygiene department by one patient a day over a year's time. That can be a tremendous amount of uh, extra income that comes into the practice over and above what you would pay an assistant. So um, uh, what I look at is uh, I can tell you just roughly what I've seen in a lot of practices that have gone to the assisted model. They can increase in a year's time a conservative increase is 150,000 extra over a year's time because they're going to increase from seven or eight patients a day to 12 or 13. Now, I know when I did assisted hygiene in the summertime, we saw a lot of children. And um, so I might even see 14 or 15 patients if there are a lot of children in the mix because a lot of that is just keeping the room turned over and you know, keep the children flowing through. It's not like seeing adults exactly. Sure. So sure. anyway, all things considered, you're going to increase the number of patients that are, are coming in. You're also going to have a great deal of flexibility in the schedule by having two columns that the hygienist is working with, two rooms. So you have a lot more flexibility than you do in just working that solo schedule. But all the same, uh, I, I hear from hygienists, well, they think that they're going to be turned into some kind of scaling machine, you know, that they're just going to, they're going to burn out, they're going to, you know, their hands going to give out from just scaling, scaling, scaling. I didn't find that. <laughs> I didn't have that experience. And uh, what I would say to any hygienist who uh, has never done assisted hygiene, don't knock it till you've tried it. It, it is wonderful having 
that set of hands to help you. One of the greatest advantages of all of assisted hygiene is having someone to help with those all important periodontal chartings and recordings. Now I know as solo hygienist, for me to do a full mouth, six point probing of all the teeth in the mouth and do it by myself, I, it's gonna take me a minimum of 10 minutes. It might take me 12 or 15, depending on the patient. Well, you know, if I've only got 40 or 50 minutes with my patient to start with, that's a, a big chunk of time. It takes a lot of time to do it solo. What I'm saying is with an assistant, I can do it in five minutes flat and do a good job with it because this assistant is recording or plugging it into the computer, whatever the case may be. And what you'll find with assisted hygiene, you start doing a lot more periodontal charting and probing. You start finding a lot more perio. Perio is the mm -hmm. most profitable thing hygienists do. So um, there's just so many benefits. And I think we'll dig into that a little bit more when we do the uh, audio part. Yeah, you know, I was yeah. thinking as we were talking a few minutes. I can see for, for, for those hygienists that have not bought into assisted hygiene or they're concerned about it, uh, to your point, I can see that initial thought of, yes, yeah, scaling, scaling, scaling. But, you know, hearing you say what you just said made me think, uh, maybe the way that they feel that way is like you said because of all of the other work that they know that they've got to get in with the charting and all of that yeah. now if all of a sudden you have removed that or you have figured out a way to have help that become more efficient it might not seem as if they think it's going to be right with with a lot of the scaling and things like that and as you know if the ultimate goal is to help as many patients get healthy and we really truly believe that it's it all starts with hygiene then let's figure out a way to do that efficiently on the front end to get these patients in. Because as you know, I don't know, the stats change all the time, but they're certainly not encouraging when you hear that, you know, only 25 or 30% of the patients in this country come to their office twice a year to get their teeth cleaned, right? Yeah. So we know that like, and, 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 if, and if that's something that we can't control because of its pricing or whatever, get it. But if it, if it is something like to your point, like scheduling and things that creatively dental teams can can work together with a lot of the work that you're doing and figure out ways to see more patients, we got to do it. You know, it just, it almost well, that we should do. Every movement the hygienist does takes time. And there's a lot of elements of a hygiene visit that take time, such as setting up the operatory, making sure everything is out, getting everything out, um, uh, seating the patient, putting on the patient napkin, and taking x-rays all these things take time and then of course the patient visit but then post visit there is the dismissing of the patient there's making a next patient's next visit there's cleaning up this operatory and doing the sterilization and making sure that that sterile chain is not broken and and make sure that the new barriers are put on you got everything clean and ready for the next patient all that takes time so if we can delegate some of those duties to a qualified assistant, we are way ahead of the game. I use, I say this, I love to eat out. <laughs> and you know why I love to eat out is because when I'm done with my meal, I just get up and walk away from the table and leave it, leave the mess there for somebody else to clean up. Well, that's the way I kind of look at assisted hygiene because it's like eating out. I just cruise into the room. Everything's laid out for me exactly like I need it to be. I'm relaxed. I get to sit down and, and converse with my patient. I, then I get to do what I need to do for the patient clinically. And then I just say, it has just been great to see you today. And I'm gonna turn you back over to my assistant now for the doctor to come in. And I will see you next time. And then I head to the next room where that patient is already seated. Everything's out. I am ready to roll. I just love it. And so uh, uh, I like to promote this, and, but I want it to be done right. And I don't want hygienists to feel like they're going to get burned out with this. Yeah. No, I'm, glad, I'm glad you brought that up because like you said, I'm sure you hear that a lot. Yeah. And, uh, all right. So I uh, wanted to thank you for, for coming on. I've got 10 today. And certainly, again, want to thank you know, Robin Morrison and, and the team at, you know, the, you know, Dental Consultant Connection. This has been great to have all of, of you who are, who are members of, of, of that great team 
consultants out there that are experts in their own right. And certainly, you know, this assisted hygiene world, and you do a lot of consulting, a lot of speaking, you've done a lot of amazing things. And I want to highlight more for people on the audio podcast, the work that you've done in dentistry. Uh, but again, you know, wanted to thank you for your time. Uh, I did let everybody know that I didn't have the number up on the screen. If you want to learn more about Diane, uh, everybody, all of the consultants that are part of DCC have their own page up on the website. Uh, where you can go to dentalconsultantconnection.com. And I've got a phone number up on the screen right now. You can go ahead and call if you want to learn more about having Diane work with your team or anything like that. Uh, they are available and, and ready to serve. So anyways, Diane, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time and uh, look forward to getting a little bit more in detail uh, on the audio podcast. Thank you, John. All right. Talk soon.